Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is the next part two and three of my article I wrote titled Argentina Resorts to Unilex Bond Currency. Okay, part two Argentina Resorts to Unilex Bond Currency. John von Neumann, the man who wrote the book Game Theory and Economic Behavior, said important economic questions in economics arise in a more elementary fashion in the theory of games. That's why my little game where everybody buys in with their watch, they get a certain amount of tokens, they spend it to produce, they inflate their price and pray they sell, but at the end of the game one guy gets knocked out of his death gamble, more gage, is more easily explained in the theory of games. John von Neumann said so and my little example demonstrates it so Socrates unfortunately missed my point I'm trying to explain that the problem is not something that needs to be watched over and fixed on a regular basis it's something that can be fixed once and for all I too admit that social credit government injection of debt-free money could keep the purchasing power balanced to the price tags Remember, everybody borrowed 10, paid to produce, inflate their price to 11, pray they sell, but there's only 10 in the home market. If the government prints one and spends it into circulation for us to have, we can now pay the bank their 11th chip and no one goes broke. So yes, the Socreds had an answer by spending debt-free money into circulation to balance the imbalance caused by the interest. Yes. And, of course, I, the son, grandson of a Socred from Quebec, I would not diss the social credit movement, especially when Quebec social credit were the precursors of the Let's software. Australian social credit has always denied that Let's, interest-free credits, are social credits. Even though the first Let's engineering design and model was so completely and perfectly described in Louis Evans' Salvation Island, that the first of France's local employment trading systems, the CELS, les systèmes d'échange locaux, acknowledged that they got the information from Louis Evans' book, not necessarily the Let's on the net that Michael Linton and I had produced. Now, if there's any doubt that Let's is a system of social credits, when the French Let's claim it's based on Louis Evans' idea, which it is, then it's a fascinating thing that Louis Evans' version of social credit has scored the French world directly and scored the English world indirectly through my investment in Michael Linton's Let's prototype. I'm a Socred, and I invested in his Let's because I sought to be a system of social credits. And in France, set up Let's's, and they thought they were systems of social credits too. So as I explained in my Douglas reports at my website, social credit would work but needs supervision, compared to Unilets, which also works but needs no supervision. They're both versions of social credits, but mine is 100% efficient, social credit only 99. It's the difference between a rake-off and a service charge in a poker game. With a rake-off, the guy's got to watch every pot to take his five bucks, but with a service charge or a time fee, he comes around every half an hour, doesn't have to watch. So which is the smarter system? Having to watch every pot or coming around every half an hour? Obviously the smarter system is coming around every half an hour. And that's the difference between social credit and Unilets. So remember mine is the only advanced engineering analysis of the banking system in the world with blueprints and plumbing and it's been unassailed for over 25 years. Bishop Selby's book Grace and Mortgage states that Galbraith and all the world's economists are wrong about curing inflation because they don't know that it's it's shift B and they think it's shift A. That's his book and he mentions that John the Engineer Termel is right about curing shift B inflation with interest rate abolition. So the bishop really stuck his neck out saying that all the economists in the world got it wrong and John the Engineer got it right. But I do and no graduate engineer will say I'm wrong and win. So the Salta bond currency system issued in the middle 1980s was a perfect provincial or local employment trading system. And though the Buenos Aires bond currency system suffers a minor inefficiency, the 7% interest, it'll still fly. 
Okay, so what's interesting about the petacons is that the only way they're going to be able to cope with the interest owed is to use the old social credit debt-free injection of new money in the only sense I accept debt-free to match the interest owed. They could do that. Of course, Salta's lets was great because they didn't have any imbalance they needed to compensate for with an injection of debt-free money, right? So, Salta's was better. That's what makes lets superior to social credit. No supervision. That Buenos Aires province chooses to inject a new 7% debt-free to meet that 7% interest on the bond has no major impact since it's spread throughout the whole economy. But it is that infamous social credit debt-free funny money injection they've always talked about distributing to compensate for the missing interest which the bankers have always labeled as inflationary when in reality it's quite the opposite. Social credit would have worked. Now Unilets is here to work slightly better. Anyway, Argentina report number three. I make this story. I explain how most have heard of the famous Tobin tax, which was in the Millennium Declaration with my Unilets resolution, that many anti-poverty groups are hailing as the solution to poverty. Using game theory, I'll demonstrate why it can't work in the simplest way. The Tobin tax wants to tax financial transactions and give it to the poor a forced charitable contribution by the rich based on transactions. Anything that goes from the rich to the poor is a worthy charity. But it does not better engineer the malfunctioning money system. Money is often called liquidity, and for this reason we'll use pails of water as our tokens rather than paper or metal. Everyone pledges their watch as collateral at the pump house to receive ten pails of water, which they all dump into the pool. The name of the game is to all jump into the pool and come back to the pump house with 11 pails of water to get out of the elimination death gamble alive and get your watch back. The house foreclosures on the loser's watch for having lost the house's 10 pails of water. Obviously, when everybody throws 10 pails of water into the pool and it takes 11 pails to get out and survive, someone has to get knocked out of the game. Losers lose their watch to foreclosure for having failed to pay the house back its 10 pails of water, 11 pails of water. I say that the only solution is to correct the imbalance in the pump house, the 11 for 10. Tobin says that the mechanical shortage can somehow be remedied by some miracle splashing in the pool. See how easy it is to show that the Tobin tax is not really better than a glorified begathon on television to raise money for the poor? It's just another form of begging it from the rich to help the poor without ever dealing with the shortage caused by the 11 for 10 rule in the pump house. Can you imagine now that though the Unilat's interest-free alternative time-based currency and the Tobin tax were both mentioned in the same United Nations Millennium Declaration, the media have chosen to play up not the Unilat's new way to reform the pump house, but the Tobin tax new way of splashing in the pool. So now, before I finally explain just what the Argentinian 7% interest on their bonds is, a demirage or a usury, I want to make one final point. Almost everything in economics is backwards. They do almost everything pretty well backwards. They do their taxation backward, and it really couldn't be compared until we have a good example of someone doing their taxation properly. Now we do in Argentina. Argentina is doing it smart. Sparta did it smart with their claim money. Rome did it smart with their copper money. Henry King I did it f smart with his English money. North American Indians did it smart with their wampum beans. Lincoln did it smart with paper greenbacks. Kennedy wanted to do it smart with silver greenbacks. Shot too. And uh, Guernsey Island has been doing it their taxation in this way for almost 200 years. So what's the difference between front tax and back tax? Right now, governments tax you and me, and we have to pray they don't waste it. They tax us up front, and we pray they don't waste. But in an interest-free banking system, they don't tax us up front. They borrow interest-free, they pay all their expenses, and when it's all finished, they tax us at the back after telling us what they spent it on, so we don't have to worry if they wasted it. And that's the difference between front tax and back tax. If you don't have a source of interest-free money, you have to front tax. Get the money up front, budget it out, and hope everybody hopes they don't waste it. But if you back tax, 
You've got your interest free source, like the provinces in Argentina. You pay all expenses and whatever's necessary need be done for a good quality of life. And at the end of the year, you told the people how much you spent, how much is in circulation, and how much you'd want back. And that's the difference between front tax and back tax. And of course, I'm in favor of back taxing after we know what the money's been spent on. So I'm John the Engineer Termel telling you that the Argentinian provinces found a way of using their small denomination provincial bonds to pull out of depression and all of our provinces and states can do it too. Okay, so that's the government leg of the recovery. The next lesson is going to be how private barter networks did a lot to also help the situation. Stay tuned for lesson 23.